Hi, this is Brandon I. Brooks, Managing Editor with the Los Angeles Central Newspaper and also the LA Watch Times Newspaper. We are here at the 59th Annual Grammy Award Red Carpet. I got a real, real special guest right here today who was nominated for Best R&B Album, Mr. Terrace Martin. What's up, brother? What's up, man? How you doing, man? Good, good, good. Good to see you. You looking fly. Before we go into all the music, man, t t tell, tell us what you, what you rocking, how you doing. It's looking sharp. My stylist, man, Charlie, which is my sister. I just wake up in the morning and she has it laid out, you know what I'm saying? But I'm I'm a watch guy and different little small things, but you know, she she did it, man. I just sit back and get dressed and write the music. <laughs> now let's talk about it. you the music man. You work with a lot of people, you're doing your own thing, but this specific the album you're nominated for, what is the album you're nominated for for the people that don't know? It's from my album called Velvet Portraits, uh, which is which is a, a a a loving, soulful, passionate album, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, and it's you know, it's funny because this, this, this is a classic because I grew up off this, but the album cover is a picture of Lemur Park. Mm. And it's the wall on top of um, a good friend of mine named Seekers Building wow. that has Horace Tapscott, Billy Higgins, all of the Crenshaw District greats yeah. right there because I'm, I'm from the Crenshaw District. So I'm, I'm, to me, when I'm on this carpet, I feel like the whole Crenshaw District is on this carpet yeah. behind me, and I love it. And see, to hear that for LA Sentinel, everybody that knows, you know, we're very proud to put on a Taste of Soul, put on a festival, be the very Taste embedded. Look, I, I live in Lamar Park myself, so to hear you say that oh, yeah. is much respect. But, ba but back to the music, and you're such a genius mind when it comes to this. Instruments and doing it all. For people that want to take that step and, and, and are, are getting away from the music side of playing instrumentation, how critical is that to the process of music? And, you know, a lot of people are doing, you know, the synthetic, you know, it's, which isn't bad, you know, still still doing it, but as far as you who can play the music, what do you say about that? I say that we all need to write letters to the government because it starts with uh, instruments back inside the elementary schools and everything, mm -hmm. you know. Um, it like, think about it, I, I mean, I went to Lock High wow. and the LA Unified School District wasn't really doing much with the music program. Reggie Andrews was doing everything. So I think we just, it, it starts I can't even talk about it because it starts with the children hmm. and it starts putting instruments back into the schools like like we need instruments at Gompers, we need instruments at Fauche, Henry Clay, Audubon, we need instruments wow. inside these schools wow. and I tell people the more you don't have the instruments inside of school or the arts inside of school in Los Angeles or anywhere around the world, you're creating the monster. Hmm. You're creating the monster because there's nothing for these kids to do. Hmm. If I didn't have music when I was young, I would have been a gangbanger because that's what I wanted to be anyway. Hmm. So the music shift in my life and the music shift everybody's life, then and from there, you'll start to see a twist and all kind of things where, no, you don't have to be a jazz musician or none of that, but you'll start seeing a twist where people will start, young kids will start being more interested in music but in, in instruments. But it's no interest and it's not their fault. It's no interest because they're not there. So that's, you know. You see, you're very inspirational. I want to go on this note. For people that, a, a child that sees you and says, man, I really look up to him, I want to be on this carpet one day, what advice do you give to that doubt that they may have in themselves or just not to take these leaps and steps? Because you may have been there on them nights when you was, you know, going to the fast food joint and the, the royalties and things weren't quite there yet. So t t tell us about that grind and passion to just stick with this. Well, I'm, I'm not far removed from anything. Hmm. Um, so for me, what I could tell somebody from a young boy that grew up in the Crenshaw district, in a household of musicians, in a household of, of certain things where they, drugs and all these other things where they tell you you can't be anything because of that. I'm, I'm a living witness when I first came with Kendrick Lamar for Good Kid Mad City that year and then came back last year for Tipping for Butterfly to now that is very, very, very possible. But right when you feel like giving up, that's the time you gotta kick in. Cause right when you feel like giving up, that's when the next day things could crack for you. You know. Well, we appreciate your time, and just so people know, uh, have you won a Grammy before? I think. Are you, have you, are you taking home a Grammy? I've been a part of some winning Grammys last year with the Pimper Butterfly. Okay, okay. You know, and um, it's a great feeling. It's a great feeling to, to get them in the mail. It's a great yeah. feeling to to hold them. Um, like I said, this one is real special because I feel like this Grammy, and even the nomination, is for not only South LA, but it's for every every ghetto and every hood around the world and it's really 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 for the Murr Park and the Crenshaw district. 
and Harold and Bells, period. Huh. Harold and Bells, shout out to you, Ryan, Ryan and Jessica. Come on, we see you. All right, man. God bless you. Best of luck. I'm